Good morning, this is Faith of Faith and Books. I'm running a little bit late, so I'm hoping that the little four-year-old doesn't wake up while I'm in the middle of doing this. Um, today is the 29th, and the 29th of each month is when, um, if you're doing the Louisa May Alcott, um, a year of reading Louisa May, um, you're supposed to report on the book of the month, and this was the book, A Long Fatal Love Chase by Louisa May Alcott. And it's kind of appropriate that I'm um, reviewing this today because today is my oldest son's 28th birthday. He lives up in Boston and um, for my 60th birthday, which was coinciding with about the time that their daughter was born, um, I was going to go up there and we were going to go visit Orchard House, which is where Louise May uh, lived for a long time in Concord. And uh, we were going to stay um, in a bed and breakfast right next to Nathaniel Hawthorne's house. Um, but anyway, the way it ties into this is this, um, Louise May Alcott wrote this in 1866, apparently, right after she had gotten back from her first trip to Europe. She went to Europe as a paid companion to an invalid, uh, and she was not happy. Uh, she liked the traveling part, but... Uh, she didn't get along well with the family, and it was not a happy experience in that way. But when she got back, she wrote this book, and it never got published. And it sat unpublished until 1995, when it was finally published. This was the publication. And um, so uh, it, it was rejected by the publishers at the time because it was too racy. Um, and she tried to rewrite it and get it published again and it was rejected again. And then whoever finally bought the manuscript sold it to, forget who the publisher is, Random House. Um, and 25% of the proceeds from the publication of this book uh, went to support Orchard House, um, the place that I was gonna go see where, where Louisa May Alcott had lived for so long. So anyway, so it all kind of ties together. But um, let me review this book. It's a, um, a fun kind of romp through a gothic melodramatic story. Um, uh, to summarize with no spoilers, it's about this uh, young, beautiful, and of course virtuous, but, but um, you know, spunky, uh, feisty a woman named Rosamund. And she, uh, Rosamund Vivian, and she, uh, at, at the age of 18, she is kind of seduced and, and uh, abducted by this rake whose name is Philip Tempest. And she, uh, at first she's happy because she's, she's been duped, um, but after a year she realizes his treachery and his duplicity, and so she tries to flee from him. And that's why there's this long fatal love chase because he becomes obsessed with her and so most of the book is about her trying to get away from him and she's got new a new friend that tries to help her and they go off and they do this but then he always he always finds them uh, finds her and so it doesn't end well hence the fatal in the in the title <laughs> um, so it was um, I, I enjoyed it, it, it different from Little Women. It's very different from Little Women, although it still has that sort of Victorian morality in it um, about the woman's, you know, womanly virtue and that sort of thing. Um, and so even though she's been compromised, it's she's completely sinless in, in that regard. Um, and uh, let's see, what do I want to say about it? It was, a, it was fun. It's very light. It's not character driven. The characters are all sort of set, you know, doing their part in this melodrama. And it's mostly about the plot. And there's all sorts of twists and turns um, that are supposed to keep you turning the pages. And it was pretty good. I enjoyed it. I think it was a little bit too long. And it got, you know, in those types of stories, there's a lot of detail. You sort of have to suspend disbelief. A little bit to make it work out but uh, she writes very uh, it's well written like the pace is pacing is good and she she just writes really well she's it, you know she and there's nothing philosophical about it there's not um, you know it's not 
prose, you know, written for prose sake. That's, you know, it's not like beautiful language or anything, but she writes well. It has a great, I thought the first chapter just set up the story so well. Um, and the very first line is, it's the chapter, Fair Rosamund, very first paragraph is, I tell you I cannot bear it. I shall do something desperate if this life is not changed soon. It gets worse and worse, and I often feel as if I'd gladly sell my soul to Satan for a year of freedom. Well, just be careful what you wish for, because that, that's exactly what happens. Um, and she really lives to regret it. Um, so anyway, there's lots and lots of plot twists and turns. Um, and like I said, I, it, it went a lot on just a little bit too long for me. Um, but I enjoyed it. Um, the funny thing is, is that when I read about this book in Wikipedia, they were talking about how feminist it was. And I guess it is because of the female protagonist is spunky. You know, she's, she's uh, defiant. She's not going to be controlled by this terrible man. Um, and, and so she keeps trying to get away from his clutches, but I just coincidentally, I just finished reading a collection of, um, of Elizabeth Gaskell short stories, and there was one called The Gray Woman, and I looked up the date of its publication, it was 1861, so this is 1866, 1861 was The Gray Woman, and it was a short story, not a long novel, but, um, it was very much the same plot, only the the poor bride the poor beautiful innocent bride who's who's you know been taken captive by um harris dickey <laughs> but by this evil husband um it was the it was her sort of lady in waiting or her companion maid that was the really clever one that helped her escape and and sort of so in a way that was feminist too and it was almost like classes or not class, it was anti-class because it was the it was the lower class maid who, who was um, the brains behind everything and who, who was so uh, independent and clever and, and helped this poor woman escape her, her evil uh, husband who was chasing her down. So, you know, it wasn't, it, it, so it really um, reminded me of that story. And also, coincidentally, I happened to be reading for my Kindle read at night, The Marble Fawn by Nathaniel Hawthorne, which was published a year before this. And it also had a lot of the same elements in it. Um, it had this mysterious woman, Marion, who is in Rome and nobody knows her history. And she's just, a, there so many things are, it made, reminded me of this, although Hawthorne is not just plot driven. He's, he is more philosophical and he, He's much wordier too. He's not, he's not uh, as tight. He doesn't write as tightly as she does, but he writes more thoughtfully. You know. Anyway, I did enjoy the book. It was something different. Um, it was a very quick read. I read it in three days. Um, let's see. So I'm glad I read it, and I this uh, edition is a nice, handsome edition. So that is. I'm, I'm sure I have more to say. But uh, I can't think of it now, and since I'm running late, I think I'll, uh, I'll just close there. I, I enjoyed it. Um, the next month's is, uh, the next month's Louisa May read is work, something like a woman's experience or something, a life in, of experience. I can't remember the exact title, but I have never read that one at all, so I'm looking forward to that one too. I, I like reading things that are a little bit off the mainstream Alcott stuff like uh, Little Women and Rose and Bloom. So it's kind of refreshing to read her other stuff. Uh, anyway, um, other people are um, going to do their reviews probably today. Uh, Megan Hennett over at her channel, which she renamed, and I can't remember the name of it, but I can link to it if she's put it out yet. And also Kate Howe, is the, they're the two women who are leading this A Year of uh, Louise May. So. Anyway, so that is it, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.